Many parents and their kids come to me trying to find the best way to pay off their Parent PLUS loans quickly. The simple answer, just pay more. But that's not really what they wanna do because if they could do that, they would do that. The real question they're always asking is, how can I get out of these loans as quickly as possible while paying as little in interest as possible and having a payment we can afford? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And it's exactly what we're gonna to tackle today. Hey, I'm Stanley Tate, a student loan lawyer who's helped many families navigate the tricky world of Parent PLUS loans. There is no one size fits all solution, but there are strategies, some obvious, some surprising, that can really make a difference. In this video, we'll explore four approaches to help you balance speed, savings, and affordability with your Parent PLUS loans. Now, some of these, they're gonna challenge what you think you know about repayment, but just stick with me. By the end, you'll have a set of tools to handle your debt in a way that works for your family situation. And another thing, we'll also clear up some misconceptions people have about Parent PLUS loans. I've seen some of these misconceptions cost parents thousands of dollars or years of unnecessary payments. That's money and time that could have been spent working towards something that makes a real difference in your life, like saving for retirement. With that said, let's start with a strategy that might seem counterintuitive at first, sticking with the standard 10-year repayment plan. Now I know what you might be thinking, how could keeping with your current plan possibly help you pay off your loans faster, save money? It feels like staying put when you really wanna move forward, right? Well, let me break it down for you because this approach could potentially save you thousands of in interest. Here's what many borrowers overlook. The standard 10-year repayment plan is actually designed to be one of the fastest ways to pay off your federal loans. So why stick with the standard plan? It's easy to get tempted by other plans that promise lower monthly payments. But here's the kicker. Those plans stretch out your repayment period and that seemingly small change can have a big impact on your wallet. Why? Because a longer repayment period means one thing, you end up paying more in interest over time, a lot more. Let me show you exactly how this plays out with some real numbers. Say you have a $40,000 Parent PLUS loan at 6.5% interest. On the standard repayment plan, your monthly payment would be about $465. Now over the 10 year term, you'd end up paying about $54,000. That includes roughly $15,000 in interest. Now compare that to an extended repayment plan with a 25 year term. Your monthly payment would drop to about $273. Now that might seem attractive at first glance, but here's the catch. Over those 25 years, so 15 years more, you would end up paying a total of $82,000. That amount includes nearly $42,000 in interest. That's almost three times the interest you would pay on the standard plan. So with those numbers in place, let's break down what this really means for you. By sticking with the standard plan, you're actually saving yourself $27,000 and becoming debt-free 15 years sooner. That's a big chunk of change that can go towards your retirement, home improvements, or even helping your child with their own financial goals. Next, let's take a look at another strategy many borrowers consider, refinancing Parent PLUS loans. Now, if you've ever wondered if refinancing is really worth it, let me answer that for you. This approach can help you pay less in interest over time, but you gotta understand both its benefits and potential drawbacks before making a decision. Before we dig into the numbers, let's just start with the basics. What exactly is refinancing? In simple terms, it means taking out a new loan with a private lender to pay off your existing Parent PLUS loans. The goal is to secure a lower interest rate, which can help you save money and potentially pay off your loans faster. Let's look at an example to see how this could actually work. Say you have $60,000 in Parent PLUS loans at 7.5% interest, and you have about eight years left on your term. If you could refinance to a private loan with a 5% interest with a seven-year term, you save about $6,200 in interest and pay off your loan a year earlier. Now that's a whole lot of savings. But before you rush out to refinance, there are some important factors to consider. First and foremost, when you refinance federal Parent PLUS loans into a private loan, you lose access to federal benefits. This includes income-driven repayment plans, potential loan forgiveness programs, and options for deferment or forbearance if you face financial hardship. So before you refinance, make sure you're comfortable giving up these protections. Second, to qualify for the best rates, you typically need a good credit score, usually somewhere around 700 or higher, and a stable income. If your credit isn't quite there, you might need a co-signer to get the most competitive rates. Now, the third thing I want you to know is that some private lenders offer variable interest rates that start lower than fixed rates, but increase over time. Variable rates are great when rates are overall low, but variable rates on private loans can climb into the high teens. 
I'm telling you right now, I've had many clients who come to me, their rate was 3%, and during the last three years of the pandemic, it shot up to 14, 15, 16%. And that's caused their payments to skyrocket and them to be put in a financial hardship. So be careful choosing variable interest rate loans. Because what I'm saying to you is that choosing that rate can make it impossible for you to keep up with the monthly payments. It could force you to have to consider strategically defaulting in hopes of negotiating settlement or filing student loan bankruptcy just to try to find a way out. So given these potential pitfalls, you might be wondering, is refinancing ever a good idea? The answer is, it is, but it depends on your specific situation. So let's talk about when refinancing can be an excellent choice for you. Refinancing can be a smart move if you meet several key criteria. First, you should have a strong credit score and stable income. This will help you qualify for the best rates and terms. Second, you're gonna to need to be confident in your long-term financial stability. Remember, refinancing means losing access to federal protections like income-driven repayment and forbearance options. You shouldn't anticipate needing these benefits in the future. Basically, you need to know you have a job and job security and enough income moving forward and your health is good that you're gonna be able to keep up with these payments. That's what I'm really saying to you. Third, the interest rate reduction should be significant enough to justify the switch, even considering the loss of federal benefits. For example, a reduction of 2% or more could potentially save you thousands over the life of the loan. Look, at the end of the day, the main decision to ask yourself is, is the juice worth the squeeze? Now, what I mean by that is, you have to make sure that the potential savings you get with refinancing outweigh the lost benefits. All right, I know you came here looking for ways to pay off your Parent PLUS loans quickly. And what I'm about to share might seem completely backwards at first, but I need you to stick with me because sometimes the best path to getting rid of your Parent PLUS loans while paying as little as possible interest isn't what you would expect. When most people think about paying off loans fast, they think bigger payments are the answer. But is that always the best strategy? For Parent PLUS loans, especially when you owe over $100,000, that's often not the savviest financial move, especially if you're nearing retirement. So what's a better approach? Let's talk about income-driven repayment plans. These are federal programs that adjust your monthly payment based on your income and family size. Here's why this counterintuitive approach often works better, particularly for high balance loans and those nearing retirement. It makes your student loan payment more manageable today, leads to loan forgiveness in the future, and your payment may even drop to zero when you retire and start drawing Social Security. Essentially, it's your chance to get out of the loan for much, much less than paying it back in full. Remember our earlier uh, $40,000 loan example I gave you? Now, under the standard 10-year plan, you pay about $15,000 in interest. Now, let's look at how the math changes dramatically with a larger loan balance. Say we have two borrowers, both with $100,000 in Parent PLUS loans at 7% interest. Borrower A, let's call him John. John decides to buckle down and pay off the loan as quickly as possible. John pays $1,161 a month for 10 years. At the end, John will have paid back the full $100,000 plus another $39,330 in interest. His total paid about $140,000. Now let's see how Brian Borrower B fares with an income driven repayment plan. Brian took advantage of the double consolidation loophole. Now, if you don't know about that, you, we have a whole video about this, so you can watch it here. Brian took advantage of that double consolidation loophole and got into the save plan. Brian's payments start at $500 a month, but decrease over time as he nears retirement. Over 25 years, now it's 25 years because double consolidation income driven repayment plans lead to loan forgiveness after 25 years, whatever. But over that 25 years, Brian is gonna pay a total of $50,000. Then the remaining balance, including all of the interest that accumulated over the years, is going to be forgiven under the rules. Now. Brian, he ends up paying about $89,000 less than John, and a significant portion of his loan is waived. Now, I'm saying that, and I'm sure those of you out there are already asking, won't the amount forgiven be taxed? The answer is, yeah, maybe. It depends on the tax laws at that time. Who the hell knows what will happen a quarter of century from now? But even if you do get taxed, there are ways to lessen the impact, making this strategy still worth it. Look. I get that the idea of carrying debt for 25 years is a lot. It's basically like a prison sentence. But this income-based repayment strategy is the best way I know to pay less in interest, contribute more towards your retirement, while keeping more money in your bank account each month. 
is basically like this golden best porridge thing if Goldilocks, that's what I was looking for, Goldilocks. It's like the Goldilocks is the best porridge you're looking for. It gives you all the options. Now that we've covered some strategies you can tackle on your own, let's switch it up a bit and talk about a team approach. Now this might not be something everyone thinks of, but it can be super effective. Sharing the repayment responsibility of your Parent PLUS loans with your child. This approach can help you pay off the loan faster, but it requires open communication and mutual commitment with your child. Here's how it works. While you as a parent are legally responsible for the Parent PLUS loan, you can create an agreement with your child to share the burden of repayment. This isn't about transferring the loan to your child. That's simply not possible with federal Parent PLUS loans. Instead, it's about working together to tackle the debt. By combining your payments with contributions from your child, you can pay off the loan years faster and save thousands of dollars in interest. For example, if you increase your monthly payment by 50%, you can pay off the loan in six years instead of 10, saving you around $8,000 in interest. Now, while sharing the repayment responsibility can be effective, it's just one of many ways to manage Parent PLUS loans. Before we wrap up, uh, let's go ahead and clear up some common misconceptions that might be holding you back from making the best decision for your situation. First, many people think paying off loans as fast as possible is always the best strategy, but while it can save on interest, it's not always the smartest move. Sometimes maintaining an emergency fund or saving for retirement should come first. Another common belief is that refinancing is the best way to lower interest rates. The reality is refinancing can lower rates, but it also means losing federal loan benefits. For some, these protections are more valuable than the potential interest savings. Now, speaking of repayment options, you might have heard that IDR plans are only for those who can't afford their payments, these income-based options. Actually, income-based repayment can be strategic tools for managing your overall financial picture by adjusting your payments based on your income even if you're a high earner, you can get into these plans. Now, finally, some parents believe Parent PLUS loans can be transferred to the student. Remember, while you can work out an informal agreement with your child to help with these payments, as we discussed earlier, you remain legally responsible for the loan. The only way to give your child the legal responsibility for the loan is to refinance with a private lender. And that's typically a terrible idea because you'll lose federal protections. Lastly, many people think forgiveness options aren't available for Parent PLUS loans. That's not necessarily true. While forgiveness options are more limited, they do exist, but you typically need to consolidate into a direct consolidation loan to access those. Now, that brings us to the heart of the matter. There's no one size fits all solution when it comes to Parent PLUS loans. The best strategy depends on your unique financial situation, goals, and comfort level with risk. Making extra payments is an awesome way to reduce interest and shorten your loan term, but only if you can afford the payments. Many people can't, especially not when they're also preparing for retirement while battling increased costs for everything. Refinancing can also lower your interest rate, which can save you money if you pay back the loan, but that means giving up those federal loan benefits. Like I keep saying, I wanna hammer that to you. Make sure you understand the trade-offs before you refinance. Now, sharing repayment responsibility to your child can ease your burden and teach valuable financial lessons, but like I said, it requires clear communication and commitment from both parties. But if I'm being honest, that situation is typically a mess because a child is often in a less stable financial position than the parent. They're going to experience a lot of change and dynamic events that affect their ability to contribute consistently financially. This is why as someone who's helped thousands, I mean literally thousands of parents, think through the best strategy to tackle the Parent PLUS loans, switching from an aggressive payoff strategy to pay as little as possible and pursuing a forgiveness strategy often makes the most sense. This is the beauty of income-based payment options like SAVE. Now, finally, speaking of forgiveness, if you have more questions about how Parent PLUS loan forgiveness works, watch this video where I break down all the ways you can get your Parent PLUS loans forgiven. See you next video. Peace.